Mackenzie Skidmore started to get an idea. She wanted to add to her family through adoption, but instead of trying to convince her husband James of this big idea, she waited on God. If I wanted this badly enough, I could potentially manipulate my way into getting my husband to say, great, let's do it. I was always great with the idea. I mean, it was never as strong on my heart as it was on Mackenzie's heart. I knew that I needed to just wait upon the Lord for that. Mackenzie came to me at some point and said that she was processing through that and praying through that and asked me to do the same. And I didn't say another word about it. This is the Revive Our Hearts podcast with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth, co-author of You Can Trust God to Write Your Story. For Friday, May 19th, 2023, I'm Dana Gresh. In Psalm 145, we read, One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I'm so grateful that Revive Our Hearts has been around long enough now that we've been able to speak to multiple generations about the mighty acts of God. A number of years ago, I met a precious woman named Mackenzie Skidmore. I was so encouraged to see her as a young woman with a great hunger to learn the ways of God and to serve Him. And I'm so glad that over these years, Revive Our Hearts has been able to pour into her life. Now Mackenzie is a mom of young kids, and you're going to love hearing the way that Mackenzie and her husband James are teaching Scripture to their young family. Mackenzie and James are commending the works of God to the next generation. But at one point, Mackenzie had no idea how to do that. She felt intimidated about being a mom. She felt inadequate. And doesn't every mom feel that? But all this month, we've been learning how God can use women who feel unremarkable to do remarkable things. And that includes the remarkable role of serving as a wife and a mom and teaching children the truth of God's Word. When James and Mackenzie Skidmore found out they were expecting, Mackenzie felt afraid. She really didn't know how to be a mom. It was the most humbling experience ever to bring a child into the world and want to honor God with that and really not know practically what that looked like. So often I walk through my home and there's fires everywhere and people are screaming. It lends itself to a lot of insecurity and I definitely felt that. It can be really scary and so humbling because you're in a state of constant fatigue. How, how am I supposed to pray for this child? What does that look like? And what Bible verses should I pray for? And I really just needed direction and prayer, someone to pray for me. When we feel afraid, one way God works is through His people. God used a woman who might be familiar to Revive Our Hearts listeners, Becky Ellerman. In March, we shared Becky's story about raising a special needs child. And if you haven't heard it, check out the podcast episode, Your Will Be Done. You'll also find a video if you'd prefer to watch. God used other women to encourage Becky, and she wanted to pass that help on to others. I think that I saw myself in the place of these young moms when I was a young mom myself and had four little babies. And I really did not know how to do this well. The door opened for a group of young moms with young children to come around my house every week. I didn't know who was going to come. I just put it in his hands. One of the women mentored by Becky was Mackenzie Skidmore. Our church had a luncheon, and there was an empty seat next to me at the table, um, at at my table, and a woman rushed in and sat there and just said, is this open? I said, yes. And... We now know she was not supposed to sit at my table, but the Lord knew. At that point, had a one-year-old and was pregnant with my second and just really hungry for any wisdom into how to parent and to be a mom and honor the Lord in doing that. And, and so through a conversation, it came out that she had a little group of moms that she talked with and would love for me to join. And more and more came, and it was just an amazing experience, even for my daughters. They were part of it, too. They would watch the little kids while we would be doing this Bible study. Becky's daughter, Annie, remembers listening to Revive Our Hearts with her mom. 
and she remembers her mom sharing resources from Revive Our Hearts during small group discussions. All growing up, I don't really remember our house not being used for something ministry-oriented or my mom getting to pour into women. Here's Becky's daughter, Sarah Payton. I just remember my sister and I um, would peep over the counter. We would walk downstairs, act like we were getting water um, from the fridge, and we would just like peek over. And I just remember thinking to myself how many women in their 20s really wanted to know the Lord more, really studied His Word. I just remember being excited that they were all there. I thought it was so cool that there were older 20-year-old women who wanted to be there and get poured into. And we went through Lies Women Believe and Seeking Him together and some other resources as well. And so in that, like having having the resources that we walked through with that mom's group that really just were the Word of God that Nancy expounded upon. The common theme of the Revive Our Hearts resources is just making much of the Word of God, which is what these mothers need, which is what we all need. Revive Our Hearts in general, the content lit a fire in McKenzie in a lot of ways. I see firsthand the the fruit of it in our home and in McKenzie and in our marriage. Fruit in the sense of her desire for understanding God's Word and leaning on God's Word and grasping the, the fullness of God. And so that's not the transformative work of Re Revive Our Hearts, but that's the transformative work of, of God and, and His Word. I, I kept asking all of the questions that kept coming to my mind as I was struggling with insecurities or questions about how to do this faithfully, how to walk through motherhood and marriage faithfully. Revive Our Hearts and the content and the, you know, scripture that it's pointed McKinsey to has been huge for our family and um, the the rhythms that we have in discipling our family. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. You know, from the ways that we memorize scripture as a family, and yeah, I'm super grateful for it. God had answered Mackenzie's prayer. He taught her how to lean on Him to love her children. Even though she knew she wasn't perfect, God could still use her to be a mom. Now, God put a burden on Mackenzie's heart. She imagined adding to her family through adoption. From a young age, the Lord really stirred my heart for adoption. It was one of those things when I was younger and attending youth group things when adoption would be brought up. I would just start crying. By His grace, He had given me a really tender spot to um, reflect on His adoption of us in a really sweet way. And I think after we had our second child, the Lord just put it on my heart again that maybe this could be part of our story of how we built our family and to just start praying about it. I just felt that call. I was always great with the idea. I mean, it was never as strong on my heart as it was on Mackenzie's heart. If I wanted this badly enough, I could potentially manipulate my way into getting my husband to say, great, let's do it. But I had at that point spent significant time with these older women, and I knew that I needed to just wait upon the Lord for that. Mackenzie came to me at some point and said that she was processing through that and praying through that and asked me to do the same. And I didn't say another word about it. You know, over the span of several months, probably longer than that, I leaned into prayer over the topic of adoption and what's next for our family, leaned into some books on the subject, and God got me super excited about it and aligned with Mackenzie, which was a big answer to prayer that we would be, just in general in our marriage, very aligned. But on this topic, we both got really excited. It took a long time um, waiting from, okay, we're going to start this process. The baby's coming at some point, Lord willing. God knew who she would be. James and I got a call that our birth mom that we had been praying for for years and years had chosen us. We met 
our daughter Ruth in the NICU in the hospital and got to stay there with her and um, had a precious time of meeting her birth family. And we walked out with a precious little four pound daughter and looked at each other and just said, only God could have done that. God answered specific prayers that we had had that nobody else knew of. Um, And we were just blown away and continue to be. After Ruth was born, we had another biological daughter named Winnie. And George, Nora, Ruth, and Winnie are the delights of our life and really such a precious gift from the Lord. We cannot stop thanking God for the gifts that they are and how they teach us about about who He is. You know, I think Mackenzie's story invites all of us to consider a couple of things. First, maybe you relate to Mackenzie's sense of inadequacy. I just don't know if I can do the thing God's called me to do. Well, let me invite you to do what she did. Ask the Lord to bring a woman into your life who's been down the path ahead of you. Lean on Him and the body of Christ to help you accomplish God's will in your life. Second, maybe you do feel confident that God is leading you a certain direction. Like Mackenzie, maybe you need to make sure you're following God's timing. Don't take on that project through your own striving, but keep in step with Him. You know, Nancy, I'm so glad Revive Our Hearts can remind women of practical truths just like this every weekday. If God had not put it on Mackenzie's heart to learn how to serve him as a mom, this family could look so different today. And if he hadn't put it on the hearts of both James and Mackenzie to adopt, their family would look so different. It brings me such joy to see how Revive Our Hearts has been able to play a role in this sweet family's life. When Mackenzie was looking for help, she found a solid resource through this podcast and through the resources this ministry offers. That kind of ministry is possible to women in every season of life, thanks to listeners like you who pray and who support the ministry financially. At the end of May, we come to the end of our fiscal year. That's when we wrap up our books for one year and start a new budget cycle. We're asking the Lord to help us end this fiscal year in a healthy position. And to do that, as we've been sharing with you over the last few weeks, we're asking Him to provide at least $828,000 before the end of the month. Your investment will help women like Mackenzie, who have a heart to learn God's Word and to pass it on to the next generation. So, if God has used this program in your life, would you help pass that opportunity on to other women? by giving to support this ministry during this crucial time. You may feel like you can't give much, but when we give God what we have, like the little boy with the lunch of loaves and fishes, God takes it, breaks it, and multiplies it to feed a multitude. So thanks so much for partnering with us at this important time. When you make a donation of any amount, we'd like to encourage you by sending a book of biographies called Unremarkable. Nancy co-wrote one of the chapters, and many members of the Revive Our Hearts team contributed. These biographies will present regular women who were used by God to do remarkable things. I think you'll get a lot out of this book, but it would also be perfect to read to young women you know, in a class at church, or your children, or maybe your grandchildren. We'll send the book Unremarkable when you support Revive Our Hearts with a gift of any amount. And right now, your gift means an extra lot because we are approaching May 31st, the end of our fiscal year. We want to finish the year well and start the next year prepared to minister to you with new projects and new vision. Just visit reviveourhearts.com or call us at 1-800-569-5959. That's 1-800-569-5959. You know, while listening to Revive Our Hearts over the years, Mackenzie Skidmore has been encouraged to memorize Scripture and to teach her children to memorize Scripture. 
When you watch the video version of today's program, you'll see this in action. I'm going to risk giving away the ending of the video. It features adorable children quoting Psalm 90. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. You can check it out, that new video featuring the Skidmores at reviveourhearts.com. And you can learn to memorize scripture just like that. Nancy spoke with Veronica Copenhaver about that. Let's listen to some of that conversation. You threw out the challenge to memorize scripture and you were working through Philippians and I was listening to that. I'm like, oh, I could do that. I had random verses memorized that I went through but that only took 10, 15 minutes. And it was like, ooh, I think I could do a whole book. And so I emailed Eric and Brian and my other sister, Jenna, and my parents. He said, hey, let's do a family challenge of memorize the book of Philippians. And Philippians, how long did that take? Five months. So you really spent some time we on it. We did. We all have our different routine now. Uh -huh. So we do about a verse a day. We try to. So a verse a day, and then you're just reviewing. The and then re review a chapter for about a week. And then start the next chapter and then review for about a week when the whole book's done. We're up to nine books, I think, memorized. Wow. So now we review and slow down a little bit more just to make it stick. But we review everything, try to, every week. So are you always reviewing everything, everything. you've memorized? Yes. Every day? Or every, the my goal is week? every week uh -huh. to have gone through everything. On vacation, I'm... I've You're missed, on vacation. I'm on vacation, but... I'm also like my checklist person, so <laughs> I want to check off my boxes. So I think two weeks ago, my husband was still with us on vacation, and I skipped two of the books. So, But last week, I, I was proud to say I got them all done, and I'm on course this week to have them all. So I have five more hours in the car. <laughs> today. I might have time You're to get on a some trip, today. <laughs> on a road trip. Yes. But you also have 99 I also children have in the car. I five kids around me. <laughs> I might tune them out and practice, but or have my kids... I'm like, okay, it's time to go. Here we go, Proverbs 2. And they go, oh, okay, fine. So it helps to do it with them because it keeps me accountable for my own. You just wonder what kind of impact that's going to have in their lives long term. I can't wait to see. I'm like, if I could have started this at your age, my oldest is 11 and my youngest is 6 to think of. And they have to review every week too. That's part of our school days. Right now it's three pages typed out. And so... You think of getting all that in oh, your hearts. I love it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it. Anything else that you say in your seminar that would be helpful for just some hints or tips? or? I think the big thing is review. I think people think, Jenna and I, we did the book of First Peter. Oh, also find the translation you like. Back when they were switching between, oh, do we want to, 1984 NIV was going out of stock. That's what we had done. Okay, do we switch over to ESV and... It's a little bit more wordy than the NIV. Mm -hmm. And so we did First Peter and ESV, and that's that one has continued to trip us up for a couple years. Especially and, when you're familiar with it in another yes, one. Yes, it just it doesn't flow. When you're used to NIV, it just flows in a way ESV hasn't. So Well, I grew up on the King James, mm -hmm. then went to New King James, New American Standard, and mm -hmm. ESV. So that is a challenge that I think the more familiar passages mm -hmm. are actually harder sometimes because mm -hmm. I'm working on Psalm 110 right mm -hmm. now and not a whole book. It's just seven <laughs> verses, but I'm, finding, I'm having a hard time with that psalm. But part of it is because I've heard it so many times mm -hmm. in other translations. But I think when you find one and stick to it, then it makes you think about it mm -hmm. and concentrate on it in a way that that you hadn't. That's one of the really complex psalms. It's a messianic psalm, and it's quoted, I think, 27 times mm -hmm. or more in the New Testament. So it's a really important psalm, but it's kind of – it's a puzzle, a little bit – it's a little hard to understand who exactly is it talking about. But as I'm memorizing it, I'm focusing on each word, and it's making me think about it. I'm seeing things I've never mm -hmm. seen before and seeing Christ – Mm -hmm. In the Psalms, in a way I haven't seen him before. And seeing also, it's just interesting as I'm memorizing this, you wouldn't think on the surface of it that it has anything to do with my life today, but it really does have amazing application. And even God saying to his son, the Messiah, sit at my right hand mm -hmm. until I make your enemies your footstool. He's saying there's a time to be still. Mm -hmm. And one of God's words to me this week through that passage has been, sit and be still and wait for God to act. Well, that's not the main interpretation of that song, right. but as I'm meditating on it and memorizing it, it's making application to my heart in a way that I don't think it would have if I just 
skimmed by it in my daily reading. Mm-hmm. That also is actually in Hebrews. <laughs> the yes, author it of is. Hebrews quotes that yes, it is. several different times. So he says, often says, somewhere it is said, and I'm, I wish he would have just said, in Psalms, there's part of me that goes, I can't wait to meet some of these men when I get up to heaven and go, could you have said it the same way, please? <laughs> Peter sa- tends to have run-on sentences that are very long. And, and Paul, same way. Paul, the same way, but not exactly, and so... It's fun now because I can hear it's fun to sit in church because men will get up and start for before communion or for the sermon and say verse. It's like, oh, I don't have to turn there. I have it memorized. That's kind of a little internal fist pump going. Oh, yeah, I've got it. I had a pastor when I was a little girl who when he would serve communion to the elders at the front of the church, he would recite verses that had to do with the cross, that had to do with Christ. I remember Isaiah 53, 1 Peter. He would recite these from memory. And here I am, like a six-year-old child, seven Mm -hmm. years old. And I was so not just impressed that he could recite it, but so impacted Mm -hmm. by the scripture as he did. And it's just like a shepherd praying scripture over his people. You think about a mom doing that Mm -hmm. over her children. It made me see the value of – because he could have just stood up there and read it. But there's something about reciting it that says this has been mauled over. Mm -hmm. It's been pondered in the heart. And now the overflow is coming out. And I find that when I'm memorizing scripture, it's amazing how when I'm talking with other people or praying with them or in the course of the day, how often that scripture Mm -hmm. will come out and it'll be a word in due season Mm -hmm. for somebody who needs exactly what the Lord Mm -hmm. has been saying to my heart through that scripture. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd like to say to our listeners about just if somebody's thinking about maybe they've heard this conversation and they're challenged. Just but. start the challenge. Just pick something. If God is saying to you, I mean, you won't regret it. It really has been life changing. And so, I mean, it's just God's word constantly ready to pour over me. When you watch the news, when you get on Facebook, you just are reminded God's word is right there and ready to speak it to me. And it's amazing how it comes and it's like, Oh, that's what I needed. That's exactly the word I needed today, God. And and there are really no shortcuts. I think people, they've aren't. seen me quote scripture sometimes or seen you quoted and would think, well, that's just a special gift mm-hmm. she has. And you do get better at it as you do it, but really there are no shortcuts. Mm-mm. It's over it's and hard over work. <laughs> and over and over again. Would your kids be willing to come in and recite a few verses? They wouldn't be willing, but they would do it. <laughs> Hi, guys. Okay, here we are. Hi. Psalm 19. The heavens declares the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. The earth, the world, <laughs> the words to the ends of the world. In the heavens He has pitched a tent for the sun. Which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion. Like a champion rejoicing to run its course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The Torah of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the symbols. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from a comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great rewards. Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgressions. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. To hear more from Veronica Copenhaver about memorizing scripture and encouraging your family to memorize as well, visit reviveourhearts.com and look up the series, Scripture Memory as a Way of Living. We are all thirsty. Yeah, we get thirsty for water, but that's not what I'm talking about. Each of us has a longing to be fulfilled 
that can only be satisfied in Jesus. Next week, Nancy will show you how to go to Jesus to get every need met. Please be back for Revive Our Hearts. Revive Our Hearts with Nancy DeMoss-Walgamuth is calling you to freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.